Hi, my name is Mike Ostertag, and this is my contest entry for Ron's Trains and Things Down and Dirty 2 Weathering Contest. In this video, I'll be taking this American Models Pullman Standard 4427 cubic foot 434 rib arrangement covered hopper and turning this into something that looks kind of like one of these. So come on along for a weathering adventure with me, Mike Ostertag. First, I'd like to uh, discuss some of the tools and materials that I'm going to be using to weather this car. Now I model an S scale so some of the names of the manufacturers and some of the tools uh, may not be as familiar to some as they are in some of the more popular scales. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking the old KD couplers off of here and I'll be changing those out with Sargent um, couplers. I really like the sergeant couplers. Very realistic effect. Also, I'm going to take the stock trucks off and I'll be putting this truck kit, 100 ton truck kit, from Smoky Mountain Model Works. And I'll be um, assembling that, painting it, and weathering those. And then uh, those will be installed on the, on the freight car. Um, some of the key materials that I'll be using are uh, some testers um, dull coat, um, some artist oils, I believe I have uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and uh, lamp black right here, uh, various pan pastels, and I know this jury's kind of out on using pan pastels to weather. However, I like the more subtle look that they give, so I'll be getting uh, or using the uh, pan pastels. And then back here is some odorless uh, turpentine. Now, some of the key tools that I'll be using, and I keep it pretty simple, is I'll be using toothpicks and various paint brushes. Some are designated for using with the artist oils and some are designated to be used with the um, dry powders. Um, I also will be using a piece of 12 thousandths brass wire and I'll get more into that as the video goes on. Finally, the most probably the most important thing I'll be using are nitrile gloves. Um, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'll take this whole car and I'll go and wash it with a little bit of soapy water, a little warm soapy water to get all of my fingerprints off of it. So then from there on out, I'll handle the car until it's completed using nitrile gloves because there's nothing worse than trying to go and weather something and try to weather over a fingerprint. Now we're going to use some of this well, that real quick flash of a white acrylic bottle of uh, artist uh, acrylics. And I'm just going to paint the top of one of these doors white. <clears throat> when I reason I'm doing this is just to represent a car that's had one of its doors replaced. Um, these doors end up getting damaged and or need to be replaced. They get worn out. They, you know, uh, so generally they don't end up repainting them the same color as the car. So you always end up with cars with off off color doors and stuff. So just go ahead and take your time paint it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, if it's not perfect, it'll help enhance the uh, weathering effect on the top of the car. So, as you can see, it's uh, not a perfect process, but a fun one nonetheless. So just go ahead and have fun with it and uh, do as many as you'd like. Okay, now that the door on the top of the car is dry, I'm taking it into my bead blaster and I'm going to um, 
remove some of the factory lettering. I'm going to really use that to fade it. Um, it's really handy if you have one of these. If not, there's a lot of other methods to use. And as you can see, the result here, the, the sign didn't really fade very much, but that's okay. Um, took a little tooth off of it. Oh, I got a little blurry there. But as you can see, the lettering really did uh, fade very nicely. Now, real quickly, I'm just going to point out that some a couple of quick marks as to or spots on the top of the car where typical rust could occur. I'm going to use a little burnt sienna. Mix it up on my palette. I'm going to take my toothpick. And when I go and take my toothpick, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a, just take a real small little dot off the end of it and put it on the places that I would like to have the rust streaks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of the clear turpentine, the over, orderless turpentine, and a real narrow brush. And I would highly suggest that when you, when you do that, you just, a little bit of turpentine goes a long way. So you can do a couple of things with it. Um, but the beautiful thing about it is if you make a mistake, just a little bit more turpentine will, uh, will clean that up. And then you can kind of start all over. And they just go around each one of the hinges to give her a little representation of uh, some usage. And I may have overdid it a little bit there, but that's okay. I mean, it's... It's a weather Tamala railroad car. And as you can see here at the end, yeah, the, all the hinges are all done. And now I'm going to take these little, uh, where the walkway is, and I'm going to take a little broader brush, and I'm just going to do the same thing. And you want to take nice, smooth, straight strokes, just like that. you know. And it's okay if the paint gets a little heavy. Sometimes those spots are a little heavier. You know, uh, I clean my brush often. Um, and I clean it using just a straight paper towel. There you go. You can see some stuff there. And now I got the top of those cars where all the, the supports for the walkway are taken care of. And that one there I kind of made a little mistake on. So as I can show showing you, I take some turpentine and it basically erased all the all the paint and you just go and redo it. And that's all there is to it. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of rust uh, streaks on the side of the car. I'm going to use a piece of 20,000 uh, brass wire and dip it in the paint I'm using the burnt sienna seal. Um, and, you know, you use the same process as you did with the top. You put a little bit of turpentine on your brush. Now, I'm using the flat brush, but I'm, I'm using the edge of it. So it gives a similar effect. But, you know, take your time. Always pull straight down when you're doing when you're doing vertical lines. Um, however, if you're trying to do a scratch or something like that, that's all great. Now we're going to turn around and go and start looking at um, adding some little uh, rusty bolt type streaks to it, to the herald. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, we're going to take our toothpick again and put a little bit of paint on it and just in the four corners here we'll put that on there. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of eyeball and equal, uh, equal, oh yeah, the one in the middle too. And then we'll eyeball and make equal bolt patterns on those. And then we'll just go back and do the same process with the uh, with the paintbrush. As you can see there, it looks like little bolts. And then we'll just go and take our paintbrush and dip it in a little bit of turpentine, pulling straight down. We're going to use a, the real small narrow brush this time. And we'll just pull straight down and, and get the result that we would like. As you can see, it makes it look really cool. And like I say, every different car is or every car has got a different pattern. And this is the way this one ended up looking. The other side I added a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna start working on our dry medium now. And I use pan pastels. They come in various colors. They come in these neat little uh, containers make them really easy to a store. Uh, so I'm going to take this old cradle and we're going to start working on the car uh, top down. And basically we're going to work on the walkway and we're going to use some burnt sienna shade and we're going to put that on and with a brush and uh, a fairly stiff bristle brush and just start working on the walkway. Uh, the pan pastels 
you know, they will fade a little when you, you use uh, dull coat on them, but they still adhere and will give you a really nice effect. So, you know, you can use Bragdon chalks, you can use uh, a lot of different things in order to uh, do your dry um, weathering. Um, this is just the stuff that I like to use. So as you can see, the, we start working on the walkway and there we got the walkway all done. Now I'm going to spray it off with a can of air uh, for using your, your computer keyboard. It just gets all the residual off. Now we're just going to keep going on the doors and the top, rest of the top of the car. Okay, now I'm going to grab some raw umber extra dark, and I'm just going to use this to uh, shade and darken up the hinges a little bit. Um, even with those artist oils, uh, this will add a really nice little layer of depth to the to the hinges, um, and then uh, we'll also use that to streak the car a little bit. Um, the cars are never freight cars are never one just one color of weathering on them. They always have multiple colors so uh, I just like to keep it a little basic so we're just gonna put this stuff in a few spots and then what we'll do is we'll follow those locations on the side of the car and bring that those streaks straight down um, and then we can use our brush that we used for the burnt sienna shade and we'll help blend all that in also so as you can see, I'm just putting some streaks on here. And we'll just keep on doing that, and then we'll get the rest of the car all taken care of. Now I'll go and I'll start putting some more burnt sienna on it. And one of the things is, is like when it comes to the Herald, you know, you can put this on as heavy or light as you want. But when it comes to having a Herald that's over the top of a rib like this, you make sure that you'll see how I do this. You, you, I always go and do the car or do the weathering uh, with my hands a little bit inverted. So that way I put the brush down and I come back up and then I go back down. So that way the, the, the weathering medium is hidden behind that. And then I kind of stipple it down a little bit, as you can see. And I do the opposite for the bottom part. But you want to make sure that that gets down so that way it doesn't uh, so that way it doesn't look like it's just straight across. And you just keep doing that all the way across the car. It ends up looking like that. Now on the Herald, go back to the uh, raw umber extra dark, and we're gonna go right back over all those little bolt areas with a little bit of that just to darken them up. And you go back over and kind of blend everything in. We dirty up the Herald, and just like that, you got yourself a, a nicely weathered side of a car. Now we're going to start working. Now the bottom is a little, I don't really worry a whole lot about the bottoms, because you're really not focusing on the bottoms of the cars. So even on the covered hoppers, I try to mainly focus on the sides. Um, as you can see, I just kind of slap it on, and I know that's not, you know, super scientific or anything, but I just slap it right on there because this is going to all end up after it's all, like, dull-coated like this is. You know, you can see how all of it, some of it faded, some of it blended. Um, everything kind of looks really, really cool. So... Now what I need to do though is I kind of forgot to do the outer portion of the edge. <laughs> so I had to wait for the dull coat to dry and then I went through and did that. Then I start working on the opposite side of the car. Okay, now we're going to start working on the truck. So I'm going to put a few wheel marks on the end here. And... That's going to be it. I'll uh, blend those in with some other weathering on the end of the car a little later. But that's just to show that the dirt that splatters up 
uh, over the course of time on the end of the car. And with that being a black car, kind of need a lighter, little lighter color to show that. Okay, so now the wheels, I'm just going to take some, uh, I believe that's burnt sienna extra dark. And then we're going to take that in our brush and we're just going to rotate that around the wheels. And we're not even going to take the trucks apart. You just rotate that around the wheels and away you go. You keep on doing that to, and then you use the same color uh, for the rest of the side frame. And if you want, you can use a different color. I chose to use a different color here to uh, to just accent a couple of spots on a truck. Um, it it doesn't really uh, need to be perfect, that's for sure. Because um, the last thing you're doing is looking at the trucks when you're trying to run a model railroad. So I'm just going to add a little bit of accent to the trucks here. And that's going to be about it for that. You know, spray them down and off you go. Now the couplers, I don't really do a whole lot with. Put a little burnt sienna shade on here. I don't even spray these things. Just get them looking dirty. They'll end up getting worn out. And there you have it. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I hope you might have learned a little bit of something. Um, don't forget to visit all the great videos over at the Down and Dirty 2 um, Facebook page. And always remember, keep her on top of the rails.